First order of business is uh, Mr. Trampagli. I just want to let you know I have good news and bad news for you. The good news is that the board voted to excuse your tardiness. The bad news is that we voted that if the sport in the second row needs to be changed during this meeting, you've been elected. I'm going to make him take the minutes. <laughs> I apologize about my uh, tardiness. I was delayed at work this evening. Um, appreciate that. Thank you. Um, first order of business is to approve the minutes of the April 24th, 2006 meeting. Uh, any comments on those minutes? They were circulated to all board members. Um, I just have one change, and Lori, our secretary, is uh, at home this evening watching, so Lori out there in TV land, please note these changes. On page three, in the one, two, three, four, fifth full paragraph, uh, it says, Mr. Chapman has verified with Mr. Smith that the properties that make setback are not included as it is mute. I think the, uh, it, the word should be moot, M-O-O-T. Uh, and then on the, on the same page, one, two, three, four, five paragraphs from the bottom. It says, Mr. Galino asked that the applicant asked the applicant if he had anything else to add. Hearing none, he closed the public portion of the meeting. I think it should indicate that Mr. Galino asked the applicant if he had anything else to add and noted that there was no one um, in attendance in the, at the hearing appearing in opposition, just so that we clearly indicate that there was no one uh, appearing in opposition to the application. So if you could make those two changes, I'd appreciate that. Any other comments on the, uh, on the minutes of the April 24, 2006 uh, meeting? Hearing none, could I have a motion to approve the minutes? Move that we approve the minutes Second. with the modifications. Could I have a second? Second. Um, all in favor of approving the minutes? Approved unanimously. Um, the next item of business for this meeting is to review any old business, of which I think there is, there is none, correct, Mr. Smith? No old business. Okay, on new business, we have three things on the agenda tonight, so we're going to try to move things along. It's a little bit longer list than usual. Uh, the first item of new business is to hear the request of Ann Kilby. For City View Road, tax map U03, lot 53, for a conditional use permit to operate a home business, specifically the practice of shiatsu and other holistic therapies for visiting clients. Uh, if the applicant could uh, take the podium and um, present their application, please. My name is David Lorry. I'm an attorney in. I reside in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, I represent Ann Kilby. Ann's lived at Four City View for many, many years. I don't know if any of you know Ann. She's 53 years old. She's not in great, in the best of health, and she doesn't intend to, she doesn't even want to build her practice beyond the level it's at. We were here three years ago uh, oh, Anne, Anne's a registered nurse, and she practices, as we said, as, as the chair noted, uh, massage and other therapies. We came here three years ago for permission for her to see clients in her home. That's the only thing that we're, that, that's the only reason why she had to come here. She doesn't want to sign. She just wants to be able to have her clients that she currently has be able to come to her home and receive treatment there. She's, when she was turned down three years ago, she got an office on St. John Street, and she's got quite a bit of experience now on the kind of uh, traffic that she's likely to have. Currently, only two or three of her clients visit her in the office. There might be a slight increase if they could see her in, in, in her home, because People prefer to be treated in a home setting. They don't like to have to go to St. John Street and go into an office building. 
she has to travel there each time. You know, we, I estimated um, traffic counts. In fact, uh, there would be some saving on the other end because she wouldn't have to go out each time to go meet with her clients. The two or three patients that she sees per week uh, is significantly less than we estimated the last time we were here when it was two or three per day. Now obviously she sees them one at a time when she sees these two or three clients per week. She, uh, parking is not going to be a problem. Uh, I gave you some small photographs. I have some larger photographs that I will pass out to you. One of the street and one of the driveway. There is plenty of room for parking in that driveway. Parking is not an issue or should not be an issue. Uh, the last time we were here, I don't know how many of you were on the board at the time, the last time you were here there was a neighborhood petition uh, against this because the neighborhood had some problems with her son. Her son Danny was the uh, when, I, when I came in, I said something to, uh, uh, to Bruce about filing a new application. He said, oh yeah, that's the house where they had the kid that people had a problem with. Uh, and, that, and that figured very prominently in the last hearing. In fact, that's one of the reasons why Anna's not here tonight. You know, she, she was very upset by the experience three years ago, and she, to be quite candid, didn't want to go through it again. At the same time, she doesn't want to continue maintaining an office on St. John Street that she pays rent on, uh, cannot sublet at all, and uses infrequently. And it, this, this is almost an ideal home use. I mean, I have, an, I have an office in my home. I'm an attorney, as I said before. I have an office in my home. I have the kind of practice I have, uh, I have about the same or maybe even less uh, in terms of traffic uh, coming to my home uh, because most of my work is done uh, at court or on the telephone or writing briefs. Uh, I meet with clients maybe once a day uh, at most on average. I, I don't, sometimes it's once a week. It's, uh, the zoning ordinance, the objection, the only objection I know of you've received has to do with the structure of the ordinance. And it's an objection to home businesses being allowed as conditional uses. As the board knows, a conditional use is a type of permitted use. It's supposed to be allowed, represents a legislative decision, that it ought to be allowed provided the applicant demonstrates to the board that it's not going to have adverse consequences, an adverse impact on the neighborhood, a significant adverse impact on the neighborhood, I should say. And in fact, this is a quintessential uh, home occupation or home business. As I said before, the traffic generation here is going to be minimal. There are going to be very few trips, additional trips generated. Uh, in fact, there will be some saving on the other end in terms of her not having to go out as often. But the number of trips generated would equate to a resident going out to the uh, supermarket once per day every day additionally and it's it's not it should not be an issue the only reason why I dwell on it is because that was the the reason given by the board for denying three years ago it wasn't the real reason the real reason was that the neighborhood was stirred up for reasons other than Ann's application I travel around the state oftentimes going to board meetings like this and I've seen many curious results. The one I saw here three years ago was downright embarrassing being a, being a Cape Elizabeth resident because I've always had great respect for this board 
and I was very disappointed in the result and the reasoning last time. And uh, you know, I, I hope that uh, this time around uh, the board will focus on the issues in the ordinance and in fact evaluate the evidence and not allow itself to uh, decide the issue on things which are extraneous to the ordinance like the conduct of Anne's son which was apparently disliked by the neighbors at the time. Um, Ms. Kilby uh, has uh, you know, proposed a very limited home business. Uh, we'd accept additional reasonable conditions if the board feels a need to impose them. Uh, we're just looking for uh, you to do the right thing for her tonight. Thank you. Mr. Laurie, before you sit down, just a few questions. Sure. Um, by the board members. Other folks have, before I dive in, anyone else have some questions they want to? I had some questions for you. When did um, Ms. Kilby start her um, shiatsu practice? Some, t uh, I think she's been doing it for close to 10 years, uh, although, uh, she really got into it about the time of the application the last time around. And as I said, uh, she has been renting down on St. John Street. And that's, uh, she's, she's obeyed the rules. She hasn't gone out and, and done what a lot of people in that neighborhood uh, could easily do because of the, the traffic is so insignificant, no one would know if she was in fact operating the business in her home. But she is not, and she doesn't intend to without permission from the board. Are there, who else lives in the house at this point? Is it just Anne or is it? No, her husband, her son Danny, um, actually Danny went away for a little bit and I said she should apply then, but she, cho she chose to wait and, uh, and he has come back home and uh, they have a daughter as well. And how many vehicles are currently utilized at the home? Uh, three vehicles. Three vehicles. Yeah. There are only three, light, three registered drivers. Three registered drivers and three, ve three vehicles owned by the home. Okay. Well, they're driven principally by uh, Alan, who's a physician, yeah. uh, Anne, and their son, Danny. Yeah. Now, the, the application itself says number of vehicle trips per day will generate as one. Of course, you were saying one visit per day by patients. Say one there? Yeah. I was a little bit confused because I had the wrong application initially and I submitted it and then I had to do do a replacement in a hurry. Um, it says number of vehicle trips per day that the home business will generate. Yeah, I think if there are two or three, I was having trouble calculating, if there are two or three a week, and you divide that by seven, I think it works out to be about one, I think. Am I right? Well, okay. each visit we count as two trips. Right. So that would be, so two to three would be four to six, and there's seven days in a week. I think what he's so. doing is averaging, and I think you have yeah. to, That's you right. can't really average, it's, you've got to figure out what the highest use for any particular day. All right, say two. <laughs> two visits per day, which would be four vehicle trips, right? Well, I was going to say two trips per day, but if you're talking about an average of seven days a week. On right. any given day, how many? On any given day, um, on average, probably three, okay? Three customers? I would say three vehicle trips because I'm dividing by five now. Well, don't, I'm, I'm don't giving, do that. What's the maximum patients, number of patients per day? Probably two. Okay. And she, Four you know, vehicle trips per day. Yeah, real, real, that would be the maximum. But she doesn't have that many patients who see her in her home. Okay. Or and what is the current... Current activity, um, 
digging for that information in here. Somewhere in here you listed what the current usage on that road is. Our, our estimate was 20 um, on, that, on that street. There are only three homes on that street. And how did you come up with the 20 per day? Well, we estimated that uh, there are some days when um, she doesn't go out. There are days when Danny doesn't go out. There are only two other homes on the street. And uh, the, uh, let's see, I guess we came up with three I think it's a, per vehicle. I'm sorry. I think it's a moot point, though, because you can have two percent of the average daily traffic count, or ten trips a day, whichever is larger. So you could have under the ordinance five customers or clients a day. Okay. Regardless of, of how many vehicle trips that are made in a neighborhood. <clears throat> because if you use the average daily traffic count, it's, it wouldn't wouldn't work anyways. Yeah. <clears throat> So that's under the definition of home yeah, business, yeah. subsection two. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Can she live with a uh, limit of two customers per day if the board were inclined to limit it to two customers, no more than two customers per day? I, I think we could do that, yeah. Okay. And I assume she doesn't work seven days a week. No. <laughs> no. So you're not. That would be that would be that would be a total of ten, which is far more than she sees right now. If you were if you were to go with two per day, five days a week, right. that would be a total of ten maximum. Right. That wouldn't. I don't think that would be a problem. Right. I'm always uncomfortable. I assume you could live with a, a limitation of no no activity on Sundays. Sure. No problem. And what about hours of the day? Can you limit the use to just during business hours? Yeah. No problem. So nine to five is comfortable. Nine to five is fine. Okay. And Parking can you in the live driveway. with the condition that the vehicles, the customers' vehicles, will always be parked in the driveway? Yes, absolutely. And can you live with the condition that there will be no signage? Uh, yes. Other than, of course, the street there's, number. There's no signage requested. Anyone have other conditions that they want to explore? I don't have conditions. I just have I just, uh, somewhat of a concern, Mr. Laurie, in that I, I don't disagree with the home business. My concern is, is again, that particular neighborhood. <clears throat> I'm not quite cer certain it's a, a very tight fit. In, in your letter, you talked about uh, the increase in trips per week is less than if the Kilbys and each of their immediate neighbors were to drive to the supermarket one additional time during any week. I don't disagree with that mathematics. The problem is those are known individuals that are very familiar with the roads of Brooks and Forest and Mountain View. And I have to tell you, I did a drive-through so I could get a better understanding. And as always, um, I also belong to Cape Rescue. And every time I go in that neck of the woods, I always take the wrong right. And I go around once or twice. And um, I think having customers come into that, that neighborhood is not, as, is not the same thing as equating neighbors going to the grocery store. Well, these, are, these aren't customers. These are regular clients. And they may have some difficulty finding it the first time, but they're not going to have difficulty finding it every time. They're going to, you know, they're going to be regulars. That was the essence of my question. Is, is her clients basically chronic folks? Will that, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Mr. Lloyd, can she also live with the um, spacing the clients so that there's not two ve customer vehicles, you know, one in the driveway and another one trying to get in while the other one's still there? So yeah. could, she, could she live with a requirement that she space her clients so that there's no more than one vehicle in that driveway and that road at a time? I'm sure. No, no stacking. No stacking. <laughs> I'm sure she wouldn't have a problem with that. Just one second, please.
microphone is very sensitive. I'm sorry. I'll move sorry? I moved my papers away from the microphone. It's very sensitive. I have no further questions or comments about conditions. Anyone else on the board? Further questions or want to explore further conditions for the applicant? Mr. Lawyer, you have anything else you want to add at this time? Obviously, you'll have an opportunity for rebuttal if there's opposition. Sure. I should have sat down. I'm sorry. No problem. Um, does anyone else want to appear in support of the application? Are there any folks here that want to appear in opposition to the, opposition, uh, to the application? Or neutral. I'm sorry? Or it could be neutral. Or neutral, or want to comment on the application? Just to understand or ask more questions? Sure, if you could just come up to the podium and identify yourself, please. Sure. Uh, my name is Brad Smith. I live at 30 Forest Road with my wife and two children. Uh, as it relates to your map, that would be uh, number 52. And I guess I come before the board probably to ask a couple more questions and then also to state just, well, some things that I'd like to have stated for the record. Um, first and foremost, I want to speak to what Michael uh, mentioned, at least as it regarded just the neighborhood itself. Uh, the roads are very windy and twisty. If you're not a local neighborhood neighbor to that, uh, I do find it a little challenging because even the neighbors have trouble. Uh, like on Mountain Road going into Forest, it's a very tight turn. That's a bus stop right there. Arguably, probably eight to 10 children with their parents are there every morning. Just one example, if we do a, a box, where we look at Forest Road, uh, Ocean View Road, and we take it over to Summit, I'm going to approximate that there are 15 children under the age of 12 uh, that live and play in that vicinity. Um, that's a little bit of a concern of mine, especially having a four-year-old and a two-year-old. Uh, so safety is a concern. Increased traffic is a concern. A question for, for Mr. Lorry, something I was confused about. We, you mentioned two to three trips a week, but then suddenly that was potentially two a day, and I don't know whether that was coming in about talking about what constituted a trip, which is to say, I guess, a back and a forth. So I'd want that simply clarified. Another question would be, will this practice, if you would, take place inside and solely inside the house? Um, sorry to go fast a little. No problem. Uh, and then, to my knowledge, having talked to neighbors, and let me just state that we've only lived there for a year, um, but I've been talking to some of my neighbors, and this is how I found out that this had come up, I guess, three years ago. Uh, I don't know about the, the sun being a part of things, but to my knowledge, there was a zoning problem with the prior request in terms of uh, parking or not being able to turn around, if you would, on um, city view, and to my knowledge, that issue at the time still has not been corrected to this day, but that would be something that I would hope you guys might at least look into. Um, oh, and then lastly, as a citizen who really sits here more to bring up issues that I think you people need to uh, think about, my question, I don't know the answer, so I don't know whether this is the proper format to ask, would be, for example, you know, let's say that it's approved, and let's say it's approved with the conditions that you've been bringing up and things like that. Then my question is, okay, that's fine, uh, but what recourse do I have if those conditions aren't met? And it's not like I'm going to go police it, however, comma, if there are uh, cars parked you know, outside of the driveway. There is more traffic. There are more than two or three individuals appearing on a daily basis. What do I have? I mean, who do I go to? What do I say? Those are big concerns of mine if it's not adhered to, if it's approved. And hopefully that made some sense because that's all I have. Um, I think I can. Uh, just comment on a couple of those questions, and Mr. Lawyer probably has to confirm um, one of those. As far as recourse goes, of course, Mr. Smith is the code enforce, uh, zoning code enforcement officer, and his job is to enforce the ordinances and any conditional permits that we approve. So, if there's a requirement that uh, business end at the end of business at five o'clock on a daily basis, and the applicant starts seeing clients at 7 o'clock at night, 
you bring that to the attention of the code enforcement officer, and he has the authority to enforce that condition on the on the uh, on the use. Uh, as far as how many trips go, as I understand, what Mr. Laurie explained before was that it would be no more than two customers two day, per day, uh, which relates to no more than four trips per day. One customer constituting two trips, one each way. And the last one was would the, would the therapies be all done in-house? For the sake of the patients, I would hope so, but we could have Mr. Lawyer confirm that. Yes. Yeah. And did you have, you might have had one more question that I might have missed. Yeah, the, the, uh, I don't think that aspect of the, the uh, ordinance has changed during that time, has it, Bruce? No. Uh, but the, the ordinance itself, it's dealt with under the definition of home business, and it allows for the, uh, this, this body, this board, to approve home businesses if they meet basically what's a seven-part test. And we'll, before we vote, I'll walk, it, walk everybody through that seven-part test um, to make sure that um, to give people's views, at least on the board, as to whether or not the applicant meets all those seven-part tests. Mr. Lori, did you have anything further? Um, only, I, I guess, um, the... Actually, the, before, the, before you go on, let me just, you did come up to answer Mr. Smith's question. Are there any other folks that want to appear to comment on or appear in opposition to the application? Okay, it looks like that's it. So go ahead, Mr. Gray. Anything else? I was just going to say... Before, before okay. you answer that, I mean, if you read the documentation, Mr. Smith's point about being confused about two per day or three per day, the, the case is being made that her business has now two to three clients per week. Correct. And if we take the conditions that you discussed with him, it would sound to Mr. Smith and to me that he would be getting greater usage by coming into the home than the case you're now making for Ms. Kirby's work on St. John Street. And I think that question needs to be addressed here for my satisfaction, and I think also it seems for Mr. Smith. But let, let, me, let me say that there is a likelihood that there will be a slight increase over the two to three per week because people will prefer to go to her home. Uh, you know, right now, they have a choice, usually, to have it done in their own homes, which is what most people really want. They really want her to come to their home. And that's what 80, 90 percent, maybe more than that, of her practice is going to people's homes. The, um, those people uh, who come to St. John Street um, would certainly prefer to have it done in a home setting, her home setting, that for some reason they're unable to do it in their own homes usually. Uh, that's the, that's the, the residue, the two to three right now that she's got. Uh, there may be some who may, you know, who currently get service in their homes who may want to go to her home because they've got some kind of family situation going on or something. And so there may be a, some increase in the two to three. I think the board's limitation is reasonable. I can't imagine she would schedule anyone in her home more than one in the morning, one in the afternoon. You know, it's a practical matter because she doesn't always know how long it takes. Uh, these are not one hour sessions. They sometimes run three or four hours for an individual. And they involve, they involve counseling. I, you know, as well as just massage. I and mean, she's a registered nurse. She take, she's a holistic um, practitioner. And she tries to take care of the people's needs generally. And if they need to talk, she talks to them. So for that reason, uh, you know, I can't imagine she's going to schedule them anywhere near close to each other. She'll make sure that there won't be an overlap. 
and I think the board's condition is reasonable. I can't imagine that she's going to have uh, more than 10 a week, more than two a day, uh, a need to have more than that, I should say. But the problem I'm having is that the application states mm -hmm. two or three patients a week. Mm -hmm. And we're now at two or three per day. Uh, I'm, I'm having a problem with that. Your whole case here is that her business is not a full court press. It's two or three a week. And you answer questions with two or three. It's a maximum of two a day, I think, is what the board uh, was, was talking about in terms of condition. It. it says here she sees under proposed use will not create a hazardous traffic condition when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Mrs. Kilby sees only two or three patients per week in her St. John's office. Seeing those patients in her home will generate only additional four to six vehicle trips per week. All patients will be required to park in the large Kilby drive. I guess I'm, there's a disparity here from what you're asking for and what we now have on the table, and it's been asked by a resident. Well, I'm, I'm not. I'm unclear. Yeah. Let me let me just help uh, uh, comment on on something that maybe there's a, a miscommunication going on. I think the two trips per day was a condition I suggested as a reasonable limit on. Um, Mr. Laurie's application. The application itself does not um, propose a limit or a condition to the application, and the ordinance seems to indicate that if that, in a, that it's the greater of 2% of the current average daily traffic, or 10 trips a day, which would be five customers a day, that they would be in compliance with if they met that condition. I suggested a much more res restrictive condition which Mr. Laurie acknowledged and accepted readily because his client apparently is comfortable his client would not be seeing more than 10 clients per week. I think it's kind of difficult for Mr. Laurie to sit here and predict exactly how many clients uh, in, the, in the sense of putting an absolute maximum number of clients that uh, the, the uh, applicant sees per week. Um, and, you know, I don't think that merely because someone says they anticipate two to three uh, uh, visitors per week means that uh, that is an absolute maximum that, the, you know, like any business, volume goes up and down. And I think it's our job to, put reason, to ask the applicant to see if the applicant's willing to live with reasonable conditions. And if you feel uh, right now, two a day, six days a week would be up to 12. If you, you know, feel that that's too lax and you want to ask the applicant if they can live with something more restrictive, we can certainly explore that possibility. But I don't, I, I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't think there was any intent here to try to mislead. Well, I think some of the confusion may have come when Mr. Laurie had figured it on the average. Right. And you were trying to figure it by the day, which is what the board has to do. They exactly. have a number per day, whether that be one customer. Because there may be weeks where whatever. she has no customer. She's going to be on vacation or out of town or whatever, and there will be weeks when they have none. And I think the neighbors have a reasonable expectation that there's not going to be a deluge of customers on any particular day when she is there. And is that one customer per day? Is that two customers per day? Is that three customers per day? I think that's the kind of question and restrictions we should be exploring. Yeah, I, th I think you may want to change your form because it talks about average daily traffic in the form, and you may want to put in more information. Sure. You may want to a lot change of it to in our forms and our ordinance. Yeah. Would you like to help draft? What would we that's need to change? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Clear to me. <laughs> All right. Did so, did, Mr. Walsh, do you want to explore with the applicant any further restrictions other than what we've discussed? Okay, the confusion I have is that the document supporting our decision to allow this business in the home states two to three per week. Okay, well, you can go one, two vehicle trips a day up to a maximum of three customers per week if you, if you wish to do that. And that falls into what he's applied for. But we still got to have a number for each day. 
um, you still got to establish the number of trips per day. I, and, and you, you we're, we're have to have at least one per day, or two per day, I mean. We're talking about a very small number to begin with, you know, and the number, you know, the maximum uh, which the board was proposing uh, seems to me to be reasonable. I can call Mrs. Kilby and see whether she can live with a lower maximum or some other number. Um, I think to freeze it at two or three um, would not be a good idea because there will be some weeks when uh, she might see five and then and, and the next week she might not have any. Um, that's the way my business is. I go, sometimes I go weeks without having clients in my office and then I'll have uh, three or four, you know, over, over a two-day period. It's just sporadic. That's the nature of my business and I, sus and I believe it's the nature of hers too. I mean, she has some regular people, but, they, but those regulars don't come every week and she, doesn't, and she takes vacations and it's... it's yeah. So you want to change the number? No, I don't want to change the number. I'm, I'm, uh, I understand you're, the condition you're comfortable with living with is no more than two per day and no more than ten per week? Absolutely. I'm, I'm sure that that would be acceptable. So if that's what he wants, he's going to have to ask the board to amend his application. Right. Well, no, really. No, but, 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 let's back up. My we've done this before. We routinely <laughs> ask applicants can you live with this condition that there's no signs? Can you live with the condition that there's going to only be parking off street, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? And we just move the application to generally, be approved with generally, those conditions. Generally speaking, though, no, it's, it's the conditions impose more of a uh, um, control on the business and doesn't, let, doesn't lessen the standards. Mr. Walsh's point is well taken that the application says a lot less than what you're going to prove as a condition. And that, and maybe the rec because he's asking for more than the application said, maybe he should amend his application if that's what he wishes to do. I, I wasn't asking for more. I was asking for approval generally, and that was, that was a statement of evidence that currently that's what her demand is. And I said earlier on that it could be increased because many of her clients who currently don't like to go to her office might well want to go to her home. And I, and I was proposing that she would be approved absolutely, but we're willing to accept any reasonable conditions. But my understanding is, is that if the application is approved without conditions, he can, the applicant can go up to what the statute allows, which is up to 10 trips a day. I, I would, well, I mean, if you review it based on the application and you approve it with no conditions, that's what I'm going to defer to when, when there's an issue, because for lack of anything else, I'm not going to defer what the ordinance says for maximum. So um, in this particular case, if I think the record should be clear that the applicant during the meeting decided he... Mr. Lawyer, be so kind as to verbally amend your application on the, um, on the record with regard to the number of vehicle trips per week. Well, it's a true statement that it's two or three currently, so I don't really want to say that it's more currently than it is. Well, you've, uh, got, you've got here, well, okay. the number of vehicle trips per day that the home business will generate is one. So that okay. means they, they can come and they can't go the next day. Well, that was the, aver that was the average based on the week and so forth. You know, I, I, think, I think that still is the correct math for the average, but... Uh, We're not talking about average. We need a number per day. It's based on per day trip. I, I understand, but it followed a question which said current average daily traffic, which is why I thought you were talking about average there too, okay? Because I thought you are comparing the two. How do we know that? What the, what, can that number be changed? Would you like that number to be changed? Sure. Okay. And uh, let's see. I'll do the math here. Um, I guess that would work out to be... Um, four per day, because the trips are two trips each, so that would be two. So say four per day is the number of trips per day. 
So we'll take that as a proposed amendment to your application. Yes, thank you. Any further comments on the, Mr. Smith? If you could come to the podium, please. No, I'd just like to speak to what Mr. Wall says, um, at least from my perspective, because I was taking pretty good notes when Mr. Lorry first started, and even in the opening statement, and this is just for the record, it said, of course, two to three visits per week. And then as we went along, suddenly it was, of course, two a day. So that's essentially five-fold more than the opening statement and arguably what the application presents, and I just wanted to state that. Thank you. Mr. Lorry? The two or three per week, first of all, was an average. Now we're talking about a maximum per day, which is quite different. You know, it may be that she's only going to work one day that week. Now, you know, it, it doesn't... I understand. I've been to the neighborhood. I understand that it's a windy... The streets are windy there, and they are somewhat narrow, but we're talking about a minuscule number of persons coming to her home and a very small number of trips. We're talking about parking only in the driveway. I don't understand why this is so difficult to allow her to have a reasonable, home, reasonable flexibility in her business. You've already limited her to two per day. I'm sure that would work. And uh, you've, you've limited her to five days a week, which I'm sure she doesn't have any problem with. I don't think she likes to work more than five days a week. Business days, sorry, weekdays. And in fact, the hours that you chose by choosing business hours, you took care of the bus stop issue because the kids will be gone by the time uh, any customers arrive, any, any clients arrive in the morning. Um, I don't understand. We've got an ordinance which says that home businesses are to be allowed if people meet the standards. There are lots of people who have home businesses whom, who don't have to go through this crucible, uh, you know, and we're, you know, it's cost Ms. Kilby, many thousands of dollars in rent since the last three years and for as long as it's necessary for her until she can get out of the lease that she currently has. It's time to allow her to have the reasonable use of her home that the ordinance contemplates and we can all move on. And, uh, you know, I, I just don't understand why this application is getting is going under a microscope which no one else is subjected to. Mr. Lloyd, besides the definition of home business, do you rely upon any other section of the ordinance for standards for approving this uh, particular application? Well, there are the general conditional use standards. You, you have a reference there? 1955. 1955? They're all here. And that the, the, the general rule is that, you know, if you meet the specific terms for the conditional use you're asking for, which are the home business ones, and you meet the general standards, it should be allowed. And uh, I can't imagine that the next people on the agenda who are asking for home business and other home businesses are subjected to, I, I know I wasn't subjected to this kind of um, uh, how to put it, we're talking about very small traffic. It, it really doesn't seem to me that this is what the ordinance contemplated <laughs> as being a significant problem. If I may, um, again, I, I don't think it's to focus on the, on the home business. Uh, I've been on this board long enough. I'm all for home businesses. I think it's an ideal thing to do. Um, the last time an application, to my recollection, did not get an approval for home business was because they lived on a street um, that essentially was a dead-end street. <clears throat> and even though their volume was low, there was a concern about safety. 
the conditions for approval to do a home business, it's not a, a given right under the ordinance, is for six particular standards. One of them has to do with hazardous traffic conditions. And I don't think this is being hopped over. I think that particular neighborhood, you can make an argument that any, when, when someone in the house becomes 16 and you add a new car, uh, I think that in itself adds an additional hazardous traffic conditions to certain neighborhoods in this town. I think City View Road is essentially almost, I don't want to, it's, it's a very short, stubby street. There is very little way to do a three-point turnaround on that driveway. Anyone that comes into that driveway is more than likely is going to back, back out into City View, which I think would be the safest way to try and turn around. I think uh, you can make an argument that's not to be argumentative, but actually, I think any additional traffic in that neighborhood is potentially hazardous. There's I, no traffic on City View. Turning around in the Kilby driveway is not a particularly hazardous activity. Again, I, 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 I don't want to argue with you about this issue, but I, it just seems to me that, um, and, and I, I know you're here to administer the ordinance and do the best you can administering the ordinance, and I don't have the same feeling I had three years ago that I was that my client was being lynched, and I, I and I appreciate that from the board this time, uh, and uh, I know you're trying to do your job, and uh, I am. I, I've been there. I've turned around in the Kilby's driveway. It is not a difficult proposition. It is a very wide driveway. It is not, and that street, there is no traffic on the street, so it's easy to drive in and back out of it. It's really not difficult, and I, and I, you know, as long as there's no parking on the street, which has been the condition, there's plenty of room in that driveway for cars to park. Um, it's, uh, I, I just don't see it. I'm sorry. I, I just don't see it. Any further comments? Uh, anyone else would like to speak to this application from the uh, gallery? Okay, seeing no further comments uh, from the audience on the Kilby application, I'm going to close the public discussion, um, public presentation, and we will open um, the application up to discussion by the board. Um, The, as I understand the application, <clears throat> the application has been basically amended by the presentation today. Um, I've lost my little uh, cool little thing here. Um, as I understand the application as it currently sits, the applicant has agreed to um, some fairly extensive restrictions on the application. There would be no more than two customers per day. There would be no more than 10 per week. There would be no overlapping customers so that there's no stacking of um, vehicles in the driveway. There would be no on-street parking. All the parking would be off-street in the driveway. There would be no Sunday uh, customers, so um, activities would be limited to Monday through Saturday. Uh, customer visits would be limited to the hours of 9 to 5 daily. And there would be no signs placed on the property advertising the activities uh, the only signage being the um, number on the, the street address. With the, my personal view on this particular application is that uh, it is, uh, I do agree with the applicant that this is a sort of um, a uh, quintessential um, appropriate use for a home business in the sense that it's one customer at a time, it's repeat customers, so the customers know um, where the house is going to be, uh, it is for healing practice. Uh, it is not for the administering of drugs, alcohol, other things that might allow or provide for the, for the customers to be uh, in any way impaired when they're coming or going. Uh, it is um, very limited scope. There's off-street parking sufficient to accommodate one vehicle, which would be the maximum number of vehicles. I, and, uh, given all those restrictions, it seems to me that this particular use is no more intrusive than the fact that anyone's teenager drives home with their car. It would probably be less because teenagers are probably more wild than this typical sh shiatsu client after they've been treated. 
pulling out of their parking spot. Um, so, um, and the other thing that I would note that it, in my own view, I think that the overly restrictive limitations on home use of businesses really falls heavily on, more heavily on women than on men. Typically it's, um, you know, if the, the, it's just more difficult for this type of practitioner and oftentimes women to make a living out of their home. And I think by being overly restrictive about home businesses, we are really impairing the ability of, uh, of many times uh, home providers to earn a living in any type of fashion. We've heard <laughs> testimony today that's uncontroverted that she apparently is struggling to maintain her place of business uh, down on St. John Street. This seems like a reasonable accommodation that really will not impact anyone. As far as the vehicle visits go, um, I appreciate and totally empathize with um, parents' concerns about making sure that uh, their children are safe from vehicles going through their neighborhood. However, in looking at the, um, the particular street in question, I don't agree with the concept that a dead end somehow or a very infrequently traveled road makes any additional vehicles inherently dangerous. In my view, the type of road we're talking about here by definition means the vehicle will be going very slow down that street. It means that there will not be you know, a constant stream of traffic going in front of that house at 40 miles an hour where it becomes very dangerous to back out of that driveway. This particular driveway is basically on a very quiet dead end street where when they back out of the driveway, it's very unlikely that anybody's going to be coming down that road at 30 miles an hour plowing into somebody backing out of the driveway. <laughs> so I think it's inherently a safe place for somebody to pull in and out of that driveway, contrary to some of the other um, neighborhoods where we've approved home businesses where they're on a major thoroughfare and when they pull out of that driveway, they're pulling into traffic going 30 or 35 or 40 miles an hour. So my own view is that this really does not create an inherently hazardous traffic condition by having one additional, um, excuse me, two, potentially up to two additional vehicles pulling in and out of that driveway per day. So for all those reasons, I, I um, am strongly um, in favor of approval of this particular application with the conditions that we've described. Mr. Chairman, didn't you also discuss uh, the overlap of clients as one condition? Yeah, that there be no overlap. No overlap. I just make sure that that's correct. I don't want to don't want to beat a dead horse, and I I don't totally disagree with you. But outside of vehicle uh, damage and high speed impact. One thing that is notable about that neighborhood is there's a lot of uh, outdoor play equipment and swing sets, and I'm more concerned about the volume of children that are not used to having any, uh, any additional vehicles on that. I don't think it's an outrageous uh, uh, stretch. I don't think the volume's going to be high enough, so it's going to be a problem. But I, I, outside of property damage, I'm concerned about uh, uh, this. Those roads, you have to go slow because you don't have a very small uh, line of sight, especially on the curve. Uh, I believe it's at the summit, also at the corner of Forest. And there's a lot of play. There's one play equipment thing, which is very close to the sidewalk um, there. And that, to me, is, is an issue. Uh, I think it's an issue whether there's no additional traffic at all. I just think the neighborhood is, is a rough place. Uh, you have to keep your eyes open with the amount of kids there. That being said, I don't disagree that the volume of two customers max a day is, is going to contribute uh, woefully to that. But I'm, I'm sure that uh, Mrs. Kilby will, will make her clients aware of the uh, neighborhood speed limit and concern. Any other comments? Discussion? Um, Mr. Smith, do we have to take each of the elements and vote on each of the elements, or can we just do it as one overall? The preferable way is to do each element, each one. But, okay. but you can group them if you've already discussed them to the extent that the records <coughs> clearly show that, that they meet the standards if that's what you vote for. Okay. 
the uh, standards, standards for conditional use approval are as follows. Number one, that any conditions of the, um, that have been set forth by the board for the conditional use will be satisfied. Um, it appears that um, the applicant has agreed with all those conditions. So um, I move to propose a motion that we find that the condition, conditional uses, the conditions to the conditional use have been satisfied. All in favor of that finding? Unanimously found condition one. Condition two is that the application, the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. All in favor of that finding? Unanimous finding on two. Three, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. All in favor of that finding? Unanimous finding on three. Number four, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. All in favor of that finding. Number five, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. All in favor of that finding. Unanimous finding on five. Number six, the design and external appearance of the proposed well, building will, con will constitute an attractive compatible addition of the neighborhood that of course is inapplicable to this particular application. Um, under the definitions of home business, um, we need to find that no more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be involved or employed on the premises in the business or professional use. Mr. Lorry, can you confirm for us that that's the case? Um, and number two, the nature of the business. So I guess we need a, a affirmative approval on that, a vote on that. All in unanimous on one under home business. Number two under home business, the nature of the business or professional use shall not increase ve vehicular traffic on the street by more than uh, the greater of 2% of the current average or 10 trips a day. Obviously, the conditions we put in place uh, uh, allow us to make that finding. Number three, the business or professional use shall not produce any odors, fumes, dust, glare, noise, or electrical interference in excess of that produced by normal residential use. Mr. Laurie, can you confirm that for us? Any external alterations of the building or site, including the provisions of parking in accordance with section 1978 of off street parking shall not detract from the residential character of the neighborhood. My understanding is there will be no alterations to the building, correct? That's correct. And we've already discussed that the parking will be on the uh, driveway. Correct. The square footage occupied by the business or professional use shall occupy an area no greater than 20% of the floor area of the structure of the dwelling unit. Can you confirm that for us? All signs shall comply with the sign ordinance, and we've put the additional requirement that there be no signage other than this, the numbers of the street, which the applicant has already comply, uh, uh, approved. And there shall be no outdoor storage of equipment or materials. Mr. Laurie, can you confirm that? Yes. Okay. With all those findings made, uh, could I have a motion to approve uh, the application of Ms. Kilby? In the matter of, uh, let me get some work. In the matter of the application for a conditional use permit, uh, for the property located for City View Road with the uh, maps and uh, lot number as described, <coughs> owned by uh, Allen and Ann Kilby, that the uh, said uh, conditional use permit be approved with the uh, conditions as set forth by this committee this evening. Uh, could I have a second on that? Second. Uh, all in favor of the application? Approved unanimously. 
Mr. Laurie, thank you. And just for um, our secretary, if she could set forth affirmatively in the motion each of the uh, uh, conditions to the conditional use that were described so it's clear on the uh, written record. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that matter is completed. The next request is the, to hear the request of Carolyn Rand Welsh, uh, 168 Two Lights Road, tax map U15, lot 67, for a conditional use permit to operate a home business specifically for the resale of homemade goods. Could the applicant please approach the podium, please? Could you identify yourself for the record? Sure. Good evening. My name is Carrie Lynn Welch. I live at 168 Two Lights Road, and I've actually been a resident there for 23 years. And I'd like to actually get the record straight that my last name is spelled incorrectly on your papers. I'm sorry? On, on the on notice the papers. that you sent to the neighbors. My last name is spelled with a C-H, not S-H. Thank you very much. Go ahead and proceed. Well, I simply would like to have a permit to sell the concrete stepping stones that I make. Um, they're for garden decorations. I have set them out in front of my home on a table for the last couple of summers. Um, and I didn't really realize that I was doing anything wrong until Bruce came to me earlier this month and I took the table down that day. Um, I think I've met all the criteria when I filled out the application and I will answer any questions the board has. Oh, and also, Bruce said that I didn't have to make a copy of the big, huge site map with my neighbors, but I did bring a copy of it if you wanted to see it. Uh, I would appreciate seeing that. Okay. Can you have a talk? This is the um, plan of your home. Of this is top. Right there, it's the same thing. It's the same thing, except it's got the neighbor's side setbacks. Yeah, it's got the Ms. Welch, Welsh, how long have you been selling uh, the goods from your home? Last summer and the summer before. And what months of the year do you sell them? June 1 to October 1. But I started selling, setting them out earlier this year because there was no winter. And what uh, has been your experience with volume? With volume? Of customers coming to your home. Right. From June 1 to October 1 last summer, I sold just over 200, which averages out to less than two a day. And I kept records that 50% of my customers bought more than one. So, How many customers, though, total on an average, uh, on a daily basis? What's the maximum number of customers you have park and come to look at them on any particular day? Uh, any particular day or at any particular mm -hmm. time? During the summer, what's the maximum number of customers that come to your house on any particular day? Four or five. Four or five a day? Mm-hmm. And where do, where do they park? Some park in the driveway, some park on the road. And is there a two-lane road there? Is it a two-lane road? Yes. What, how many lanes in the road in front of your house? Two-lane. And is there a shoulder? Mm, not a paved shoulder. Not a paved, it's just a dirt shoulder. Mm -hmm. So the people that park on the road basically take two tires off the pavement onto mm -hmm. the dirt, leave two tires on the pavement. Mm -hmm. But I have plenty of parking space in my, in my driveway. Yeah. And where do you display these? Um, Steps outside or inside? Well, I had been displaying them outside until Bruce told me that I couldn't. So the original garage to the house, which is 
as you're facing the house on the left hand side, the original garage, it's a very one car garage. That's the room. I've been using it as a garden shed because it's right next to my vegetable garden. Mm -hmm. But that can be transformed into where I would display the stepping stones. So your proposal is basically to um, use the garage to, that's where the basically retail space would be. Right. Carolyn, if I may, that neighbors on Beacon Lane, mm -hmm. have they ever had any complaints about you selling anything or concerns? Not, not to me. <clears throat> and there's never been any accidents uh, in the last several years that you've been selling this? Not to home? my knowledge. I believe this speed limit is, it's 35 approaching my house from the southwest, mm -hmm. and then it turns 25 right at the top of the hill, which is where our driveway is before you head down. What hours of operation are you proposing for this application? Well, if I go by when people stopped by last summer, I would have to say 10 to 7, between 10 and 7. And what days of the week? Well, I had been leaving a lockbox out, and it would be by the honor system. People would just drop money in the box. So even when I went away, I just had them set out. But I won't be doing that. I won't be leaving my house open when we go away. Um, whatever limitations you give me, if, if I'm approved, I certainly would live by that. <clears throat> what days would you like? What days would I like? Well, weekends are great, so you should, if uh, Sunday through Saturday is what I would like. There's traffic all summer long on my road every day. And can you describe, I'm not sure I understand what it is you're selling. Could you just describe them? What I'm selling? Yeah. It's a concrete stepping stone. I pour concrete into a mold and then I put things in them like sea glass, shells, broken pottery. How large are they? Um, the largest ones are 13 inch diameter. You know, just bigger than a foot diameter. They're all round. And how much do they weigh? Um, between 10 and 20 pounds, so depending on the size because they make three you different. Pack them and you box them up or they just pick them up the way they are? I'm sorry? You just, you sell them? As is. As is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the sign that you're proposing in this packet, is this the sign that you're suggesting? Where is that going to be um, on the property? Is it too, uh, is it going to be seen from both directions, or is it? I was hoping to make it so that it would be seen from both directions, a two-sided sign. Um, and that's just a, a sample, the picture that I included. But right, but close to similar to that. Um, where I would display it would either be right in front of my garden or at the top of my driveway, wherever I'm told I should display it, I suppose. On it. Would, would that be a permanent sign or would that be put out in the 10 to 7 time frame? That you it can be taken down every day. I was, I was going to put it on a post and the post can be taken right out. It's like a real estate sign post that can be taken right out of the ground every day if that's what needs to happen. Where is, where is the driveway on the property? Could you describe that for us? It's on the right hand side of the house. Right here. And what's the different distance between your driveway and the uh, is it the road that's right there? The next road, Beacon Lane. Beacon Lane, yeah. The distance. Yes. It's what? 
I had my glasses. Do you have the rulers, Bruce? Yep. Remember what the scale was? You could scale it off that site plan. But just yeah. back to scale here. I can't remember what the scale is. Site plan. One inch equals 20 feet. You can do it. Yeah, this is driveway. So we're talking about. So what do you want the driveway to Beacon Lane? About 45 feet. I get 60 feet to the 60 feet. property line, and then there's another eight feet or so to the travel portion. <coughs> so 65 feet to the, to the edge of the driveway. <coughs> And I take it these customers are tend to be, you don't have repeat customers generally. These are new, generally vacation folks that are driving by that stop by. That's correct. I did have, I did have a couple of repeat customers that bought yep. 10, 10 to 15 at a time. Yep. But mostly it's people just happen to see them sitting out as they drove by. That's why I want a sign since I won't be able to have them sitting out. Ms. Welsh, um, the driveway is on the right-hand side of your house, but the shaded area for the business is on the left-hand side? Right. I have a walkway that goes along the front of my house. We have a stockade front fence out in front of our house, so the walkway is between the fence and the house, and it goes along the front of the house and then down into what was the old driveway and the old garage. Is it possible to um, put the sign and the, the business part by the driveway so that customers would pull into your driveway instead of stopping on Two Lights Road? Well, except the garage, the two-car garage that we have in the driveway is where we put our cars. Um, I could put on the sign, park in driveway. The amount of stones that I have and that I would have on display, there wouldn't be an area in my present two-car garage that we use. Oh, but you, what he's saying is you got to direct them off. off exactly. So and if I should be there with this, arrows here in pocket and then, then you could put a little arrow showing right. where to go. Mm -hmm. Was we talked about this before. We right. said that could be a problem. But if the sign was in the, at the top of my driveway, right. with saying parking and drive. So the answer is you'd be willing to do that. Well, I thought, I thought he was saying put them in my other, in my garage that I use. Is that no, what you no, asked? No, no, he's no. He's trying to attract the, the customers into that side of the house. Oh, yes. Exactly. Yes, I'm sorry. I didn't, misunderstood your question. However, you could ask the question, could you move the actual business over to the garage side of the house completely and satisfy the whole, the whole issue? But it sounds like you don't want to do that. If I had to, I suppose I would have to, but it, it doesn't seem feasible for me since we use that garage for tools and our cars. And you, you make the products on the left-hand side no, I make, I make them in my present garage. I'll pull the car out, make them in the garage, oh, then you and then I haul them, them down. <laughs> because the room is so small on the other side. Any other questions for the other? Do you want to add anything else? And you'll have a time to rebut anything okay. that comes up. Great. Does anyone else want to appear in support of the application? Hi. 
I'm Mary Page. I live at 172 Two Lights Road. I'm Carrie Lynn's neighbor. Uh, she's been doing this again for three years now. There's absolutely no problem with us to have this. There's no increase in traffic. There's no problem with parking. There's nobody's getting into an accident. Nobody's running over anybody. People drive by, see it, stop. We don't ask for people to come. There's, there's, she doesn't advertise this. This is just people driving by. So this is, um, there's no issues with the neighbors, with myself, in anything in regards to this. And I'm directly across from her, so. You're on the other side of the street? I'm on the other side of Beacon Lane. We're butters. We next door to one another. Mm -hmm. And you don't feel that when the cars are pulled off on the shoulder of the road that presents a um, No, no. Traffic. I have more people that stop and ask me how to get to the Lobster Shack, where the lighthouses are, how to get to the state park, how to get to back to 77, more than she does business. I have 10 people a day stop to ask me directions than anybody that's stopping anyplace else. Mm -hmm. That is more of a problem. People riding on the side of the road, people walking on the road, they're taking, I mean, that's just, that's just taking their life in their own hands first off themselves yeah. because there's. I'm sorry, and your, um, your house sits where in relation to her house? Ne right next door. Across Beacon Lane? Across Beacon Lane. Mm -hmm. You're right on the corner house? Mm-hmm. Any other questions? Thanks, Ms. Page. Does anyone else want to appear in support? Anyone else want to comment on or appear in opposition? Uh, good evening. My name is Dan Boxer, and I think I'm here in the uh, excuse me, in the comment category, uh, although with some concerns, and, and I do appreciate uh, your honesty and straightforwardness in the application, and I'd like to make this a uh, sort of a productive dialogue uh, because uh, I certainly recognize that the ordinances provide for home occupations, and so I think the, the real task ought to be to make sure that everybody in the neighborhood feels okay about it. Uh, there was a letter that was delivered today uh, signed by eight or ten people in the neighborhood. Um, I was one of them. Uh, I'm not representing anybody. Uh, I was a lawyer at one time. I haven't been for a while, but I'm, I think I'm speaking for... Sounded I familiar. Pardon me? The name sounded very familiar. Um, I, I haven't been involved in, in that for a while, but I'm speaking for my neighbors. Uh, I've lived in Cape Elizabeth for 37 years and lived in that neighborhood for uh, eight years. Uh, we are not direct to butters. Uh, we did get a notice, I think as the crow flies, we're a lot or two over on Mayor's Hollow Lane. Uh, we do go by um, uh, Mrs. Welch, Mrs. Welch's home uh, every day and, and have to and walk there every day and ride bikes there, so it's of some concern. Um, and as I said, I'd, I'd like to try and be uh, somewhat positive, constructive, but, but also honest. Um, having said that, um, I think the questions that we have, and, and some are questions and some are comments for the board to consider, uh, really fall into three obvious categories. Um, one is the traffic. And um, I, I think any parking there absolutely has to be off the road. Uh, there's a lot of traffic there. It's impossible for a car uh, to stop, as Ms. Walsh acknowledged, without having a few tires on the road, and the road's just too narrow, and and, and uh, your neighbor was absolutely accurate that you take your life in your hands as it is when you walk on that street. Uh, and having a car <clears throat> in part of it is, is making it more life-threatening. So um, we... One reason why we were concerned is I, I think it was on a very small scale in the last couple of years, but we did notice, uh, um, I guess it was last fall when the table was last up, it, it was last there at one time, two cars sort of in the road and pe two people getting out simultaneously and, and, uh, and it just shouldn't have cars parked on the side of Two Lights Road. It's a very, very busy road. Um, I think you're gonna have your work cut out for you. Um, 
and be happy to comment on trying to figure out how to assure the parking in the driveway, and I, I think you'll have to monitor it uh, uh, pretty heavily because people are going to have to turn around and back in and out, and, and the family will be there, and so somehow there have to be uh, some controls to be sure that um, we don't make a, a bad street uh, traffic-wise worse by people backing out uh, into it who are there, and so I leave that to people who know more than I do about how to regulate traffic and control it. Um, the, uh, um, the sign that we saw in the, uh, uh, in the application, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, we'd much prefer uh, not to have prices uh, stated in the neighborhood, I think in the general category of affect the neighborhood uh, uh, signs that talk about the price range, um, probably are not, certainly I, I wouldn't, uh, prefer something like that. I think a sign um, identifying the business is obviously appropriate. Uh, um, I guess I'd like to see it in, in real life because it sounds three-dimensional uh, and I don't, so I don't have a feel for uh, uh, how it's going to look, uh, but certainly I'd, I'd urge you not to, to start the precedent of having people post the prices on, on signs if that's within your authority. Um, the uh, sample also mentioned sea lady faces, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't know what that meant, whether there were multiple products being sold there. Well, they're all garden decorations made out of concrete. And you make them all? Yeah. No, nope. my neighbor Mary makes oh. the sea lady faces. And, and the, the picture on the, uh, on the sign is, is the, the stepping stone thing. Yes. Yeah, and, and the sea ladies also. Um, Oh, is that you? You're the sea lady. Yeah, you, you were the sea lady son. Okay, all right. Um, um, do you try? I shouldn't. I, I guess I addressed my questions to the chair. Uh, the calculations about people and figures uh, uh, and how you're going to deal with the, the driveway and the turnaround thing would need to accommodate, I guess, a new product, an additional product that. Uh, that with the sea lady faces on your table before. Mm -hmm. So maybe that'll attract more, maybe it won't attract more. Did you just explain, I'm sorry, I'm missing this point. What it, you were saying there's two products sold? Well, what, what got my curiosity was the sign says stepping stones and sea lady faces. And, and I guess the sea lady faces are yours that you're the, the broker for, or the agent or something. You're gonna sell her sea lady faces. In, if the board approves it, yeah. yes. Okay. And so the traffic, your experience in the past with a couple of cars a day, which sounds reasonable, was based on your stepping stones out front, not on also selling the sea lady faces. Correct. Yeah. That, that was the question. So I, I don't think it's going to be a big thing, but it certainly, by definition, has to be more than it was before if, if two products are being sold rather than one. And, and that's just going to, um, I, I guess that makes me request you to uh, just work if you can, uh, more cautiously on, on working through this traffic thing, which is far and away our biggest concern, the cars on the road. Um, and the last comment, which I think has been, uh, has been answered, is uh, outside display of products. And uh, um, the stuff that was outside before is all going to be moved inside, I understand. So uh, there'd be no visible displays or no uh, exhibits or tables outside, and, and so that Assuming that's the case, yes. that uh, that goes away. Um, and I'd, I'd just like to say, as a general comment, one reason why a number of the neighbors and um, or they through me are here tonight is that uh, uh, we have had some issues on that street. Uh, uh, it looks like it could sort of flop over into a commercial street with people. Uh, uh, wanting to take some commercial advantage of the, the lighthouses and the lobster shack. Uh, the art gallery uh, right at the corner of my street uh, uh, at its height this summer had three signs and balloons uh, and one of them was a sandwich sign that was a couple hundred feet up the road. To, it was almost like the Burma shave signs when you go south. You know, every ten feet there's a sign pointing you to where, where to buy your, uh, uh, your stuff. So I have I have visited them, and, and that should be in check this summer. 
not, thank, please call. Thank you. So, so there, is a, there is a risk with all that commercial traffic that, uh, that it gets out of hand. And so we wanted to express that, uh, um, that we will work with the people there, but, uh, but hopefully in a way that works for everybody. Um, that was the end of my comments. I'm perfectly happy to answer any questions or respond. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boxer. Any other folks appearing in support or opposition? Anyone else want to speak? <coughs> Little sport doesn't want to get up here and say something. Um, does the applicant, do you want any rebuttal to the comments? Well, uh, do I need to get up? Yes. Yes, please. Um, I guess the only thing I wanted to mention about um, adding a different product on the sign, I believe the ordinance says that, well, not that we have to have the long conversation that we did before with the first applicant, um, but it's 2% of the average annual daily traffic count on the road or, or 10 trips, whichever is larger. Yes. So. I think that gives me 36 vehicle trips. If the average annual daily count on the road is 1,800 vehicles. So if one extra person stopped to buy a sea lady face, I'm still only at, right. I, I, I don't think it changes the amount of traffic. Where did you come up with the uh, average daily traffic count from? Um, I called, I called State the DOT. Information. State. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I just, I have to ask this as an old retailer, okay? 27 years in the retail business. Uh, let's go back through the manufacturing process. You're going to make it in the garage and move it to the other side of the house and the economies of scale as it relates to what that is all about. I just wondered about, you know, would you consider moving that operation so that it is on the side of the house where people will come to you at less time at your house, well, whatever. Is that, you know, have you thought about that? The second issue is, have you thought about selling these in other places, like at the Lobster Shack, where they have... That's what my husband wants me to do. Well, I, I mean... <laughs> I have thought about I mean, it, but I haven't researched it. In terms of it. outlets and opportunities to, to sell this product that you make in your home, I just asked the question, have you pursued that concept? I haven't pursued it, but I have thought about it because my husband makes me think about okay. it often. Okay, all right. Well, again, I'm not <laughs> asking for an answer, but I just, as a true retailer, I have to ask you the question. If you really thought about traffic, people parked and looking to spend their dollars, you know, I just wonder about, you've got it right down the street, you know, and, you know, li listening to one of your neighbors talk about that part of town and some of what's taking place in the overall character of the area. I just wonder about that as an option for you down the road. But I think I would have to jack up my prices quite a bit. That's good. Hmm? Well, I'm afraid people won't buy them if they're too expensive. Um, just uh, following up on the comments just made by um, Mr. Welsh. Uh, Mr. Walsh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ms. Walsh, I haven't asked you of a seat. Walsh, right. Welsh. Um, <laughs> I have reservations uh, about the application in the sense that uh, it is more of a traditional retail, what you're trying to do with signage. And I do have concerns about the neighborhood, and I also have to con concerns about the traffic safety issue with people pulling off on the side of the road, notwithstanding the comments of your neighbor. Um, and it's difficult from me, for me from the application itself to get a feel for exactly what the traffic layout is. Uh, we just have some sketches, relatively rough sketches of the way the property lies in the, in the, in the street itself. Um, so based upon the application as it sits tonight, I would not be comfortable um, you know, moving forward with the application tonight. I would at least want a site visit or like the other application did, have photographs of the configuration of the lot and the um, and the um, Beacon Lane and your driveway and where people are going to be. And we can proceed in either, either fashion to get those additional photographs or do a site visit. But I'd also you know, piggyback on 
on my co-members' comments about, you know, I have reservations about the appropriateness of creating a retail space in um, what is a residential area. And I think people, you know, there's, there's minor impacts from home businesses and then there's major impacts. And one of the ma most major impacts in a residential area, I think, is creating signage and a retail environment where new customers are coming every day and you don't know if two are going to come or 20 are going to come on a hot summer day. And um, so I, I just um, put those comments out there for you um, to do as you see fit, um, but at least that's where my concerns are coming from. And just if I, if I may, I, I'm sort of somewhat on the different side of the fence here. Um, uh, I, I drove by, I, before all uh, matters of this board, I usually try and do a, my own personal site visit, which is to drive through. And, and in your case, I actually rode my bicycle uh, down on Sunday. And uh, the volume of traffic on Two Lights Road, uh, I don't think is, is uh, being contested. It's a, it's a highly trafficked road. People don't go down there because uh, there's an empty field at the end of the road. They go down there because uh, the Atlantic Ocean is down there and there are a couple of other well-established businesses. I don't think anyone goes down there, unfortunately, to stop and purchase anything at your home. I think it's sort of what, what happened. Um, you've lived in the neighborhood for 23 years. You said over four months of practice, uh, you, you sell roughly 200 stones and a lot of people buy more than one. Um, I think what would happen is that people would probably pull into Beacon Lane, which would be the most sensible thing if I was going to stop at your home. Uh, you do have a very, uh, there is a walkway from your driveway that goes right to where you're, you're used to sell your stones. Uh, I think it's well la uh, laid out and, you are, and those people are protected from the traffic because of it behind the fence. Uh, I find it ironic that uh, because someone apparently made a complaint, you used to have your stones on a table, um, now because of that you need to put a sign up. Um, I think you're entitled to put whatever you want on the sign. Uh, I, usually kids in my neighborhood that sell lemonade, uh, you know, put a price on what they're asking for. Um, I think that the, I think this is a case of where uh, you've been doing a home business, which I think the comprehensive plan and the um, ordinance do allow for uh, making sure that we meet those conditions. I think the biggest one always to me is traffic safety. Um, the fact that you have a track record of three years uh, of, of doing that business on that road with no problems and that the volume uh, is not expansive. It's not like you're uh, you know, selling a, a product, uh, uh, food product, whatever people are going to be sitting uh, down. I mean, I think we have to sort of to a certain degree, draw the line. You know, there's a there's a very uh, entrepreneurial young man who thinks in middle school up on uh, up on Wells Road neck of the woods who gets his uh, you know gets in the newspaper every once in a while and he has a very fancy stand. He sells coffee on the way to work in the morning for a summer school job. Um, <clears throat> you know, I mean, at what point are we going to I think as a town going to say uh, you know should we start looking at uh, lemonade stands and, and other roadside businesses? I, I do not think that uh, what you're doing is uh, against the ordinance, nor do I think it's outrageous. Um, Thank you. It is against the ordinance because you never got it approved. Uh, uh, there's, there's been several, because, because of ignorance of not knowing it had to be approved, uh, like the business that was in the newspaper for 20 some odd years uh, selling uh, light poles a couple of years ago, there was somewhat of an embarrassment as well. Uh, but that was, again was one of didn't know that needed to do that. Um, so I guess, I don't know, I guess my, my feelings are compared to uh, doing home business and looking at the ordinance, I, I don't see, uh, I, I don't have a tremendous amount of trouble with this application, personal feeling. Any other comments? I, I have a question, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, do you advertise or have any plans to advertise? I have never advertised. Okay, and do you have any plans to advertise? If I could afford it, I might, but it doesn't generate an awful lot of money. It's more of a hobby that I make money at. And um, I I'm concerned about people stopping on Two Lights Road as well. Is there anything you could do to 
um, you know, that you could suggest tonight that would, um, you know, sort of guarantee to us that that people would not stop on Two Lights Road, that they would pull into your driveway? Well, wouldn't a sign saying park in, or parking in driveway direct people to park there? And they wouldn't, I think that the reason people had stopped on the side of the road is because that's where they saw them. If they don't see them on the side of the road, they see the sign that says park in the driveway. If they're that interested, they'll follow the sign. The only reason they stopped before it was because that's where they were displayed. You know, I don't, I don't see how she can control somebody from parking on the side of the road unless the town posted it no parking. She can only direct it to a parking lot as any regular business or home business would do. And, and uh, if it becomes a problem with people parking on the road, certainly I'll get some complaints and we'll have to revisit to see if, if there's an issue. Because um, if it becomes a hazard, then it has to be addressed. And that, and that really goes to my concern with creating retail spaces in, in residential areas. You, 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 they attract people to pull over on the side of the road. Yeah. I mean, if I she's... Think we, I think we mean they, the, the, the whole crux of a home business is to sell products that are made on site or, or made crafted. It's more like a craft thing. You know, when you say retail sales, you think more buying wholesale and selling retail of, of tourist trinkets. So, I mean, there is a little bit of a distinction in that, like uh, Mike said, the comprehensive plan encourages that type of activity as a home business. Uh, so, there's something to be said about that. Yeah, I mean, my, my point is if she's going to convince us that this wouldn't be a traffic hazard, in my mind, she has to convince us that um, her customers are going to go in the driveway and not stop on Two Lights Road. And if she could, could suggest a condition we could impose um, that would encourage people would, to... Would, I, would it be appropriate to put another park, sign up that says no parking here? You can't post it. You can't I, I know. You have no, the, town, the town council would have to post the road. I wouldn't. That would be fine she with me. You can direct them into a parking area, and that's about all she can do. I'm outside all summer long working in my garden when people stop. If they don't park in the driveway, I can tell them to park in the driveway. Well, I, but they're not going to park. I, if, if there's nothing displayed outside, they're not going to park on the side of the road because they're not going to know that it's there. They'll know that something's there if they see a sign that says park have to put in the driveway. driveway to see where to go to look at the, the product mm -hmm. you've got for sale. Right. So if you put the sign underneath it, put parking with an arrow, if they don't know where to go, they're going to have to pull in. Um, not saying it's fail safe, but without it, without the outside display, at least they're going to have to they're going to have to they look for a place to park so that they can find out where where the products are being sold. But this would be a question for you, Bruce. Can, can in an application like this, can a, can a, can the board give uh, Ms. Welch uh, uh, approval for this uh, this upcoming season? Well, you can really but measure you, and monitor this yeah. whole effort. Well, you could, but I mean, it either meets the standards or it doesn't, and it's based on what you've heard. Mm -hmm. And if indeed it something goes wrong this summer, then I'll get word of that and, and mm -hmm. we may have to address that at that point. I mean, the safeguards there, if, if, they, don't, if they don't follow what's, yeah. what's, what's approved, then, then I can take action. See, my problem is that admittedly there's been cars pulling off on the shoulder of the road Two, two wheels off the road, two wheels on the road on a two-lane highway where my recollection, although I did not visit the site before we came over, is that cars go along pretty good clip. So I'm not convinced that there's not a traffic hazard issue based upon what I've seen. Now, if I do a site visit, 
or if we have additional photographs um, that you know give me more comfort because it based upon the application itself it's very difficult to get a view vision of what it really looks like I'm willing to keep an open mind but based upon what I've heard so far today I'm not convinced that there's non-traffic hazard well and, and, and I appreciate the fact that you'd like to do a site visit but the same situation will be, will be there you will still wonder you know people will if they were going to stop, they're going to, whether you had to site visit or not, I mean, that could be an issue. But one of the standards is that we have to find that the business will not create a hazardous traffic condition. And if, in fact, people are pulling over on the side of the road with two wheels on the road, I am concerned it may create a tra hazardous traffic condition. I, I, I hear you. But what, I'm, I, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, and I'm not defending the application, but you should look at the you should look at the parking area to see if that will take the, the I can't tell based upon the limited information we have in the application what it will take and how it plans to scale. I understand it's planned to scale, but there's no photographs and based upon the application personally can make the not cannot make the finding that is required by this application. I'm going to, I'm going to go back to uh, 120 day season selling 200 stones and some people buying more than one stone at a time and the fact that it's been happening um, for three years and the fact that uh, your driveway is rather expansive uh, when I've looked at it and that uh, it's ample room to turn around easily inside your driveway. Um, I mean to a certain degree if someone has a garage sale um, in, in this neighborhood, which people often do, and I always come by and say, boy, someone should call the fire department or the police department because uh, this we have never had, um, to my knowledge, that's why I was asking about complaints or any, uh, any problems where, uh, you know, uh, public safety has been called because of multiple cars parked in front of your home in the past three years. Not that I know and, and I mean, I don't think that information has come to light. Uh, not to say that that could not happen, but looking at the numbers of 100, 200 sales over 120 days. And I know everyone that stops may not buy something, but still, uh, I think with the sign parking into the garage, I'm not quite certain what more we could. I guess my, my feeling that I, I've seen the properties, I guess I don't, I'm not so heavy on them. On a photograph. I'm just trying to figure out what we could do to, to try and safeguard this more than what we're doing. Well, you know, my, my understanding is we have, you know, a multi-part multi -part test that we have to make findings have been established in order to approve the home business. And based upon the information we have, my personal opinion is that we can't make at least one of the necessary findings, if not other ones. So, um, you know, that's that's kind of the way it goes. We can we can say, you know, have a sign that says parking's in the driveway, but then on top of that, we have to be comfortable that the that in itself will eliminate a traffic hazard and based upon the limited information I have about the way this property lies, uh, the absence of photographs and the, and the fact we don't have a site visit, and the fact we've already heard from the applicant herself that cars in the past have pulled off on the side of the road with two wheels off the shoulder and two wheels on the road, I mean, the, that's the information we have. But the reason that they pulled off was because the product was displayed right there on the side of the road. If it's not displayed there, why would they stop? You want them to stop. You're going to but, have a sign But the, if they stop. see the sign, if, they, if they're going to read the sign, then they're going to read park here. Yeah. And that's... They're not going to park where they parked yeah. before because there's nothing there. Yeah. I hear what you're saying, and I guess I'm just not comfortable that based upon the limited information I have as to where is the, the current plan before us has nothing more than a drawing of what the sign will look like. It says proposed sign for home. I'm not mm -hmm. sure where it's going to be located. 
doesn't have any of them because the I didn't think that the application asked for it it just asked for size right and I'm just telling you based upon that this is just my view based upon the application as it said it's not sufficient for me to make the necessary finding so I'm just giving you a, you know you're welcome to do one of two things you can ask us to close the deliberations and proceed to a vote um, and we'll either vote it up or down, or you have the right to withdraw the application and resubmit it, or you can, you know, invite us out for a site visit to see what the property looks like. Well, I think it's your call whether it's a site visit or not. The, yeah, I mean, she, I understand that. It's our call, but, you know, the, it's also up to the, uh, we can deliberate that as well. I mean, we could also, even if she, Presses the application today. It's the board can make the decision that we should have to Well, one thing that'd be important to me is to know if, if, um, I mean, my thinking on this is that I'm concerned about the cars on Two Lakes Road as well. Like I've said before, um, but, but the reason they were stopping is she was displaying things on the left side of her property. If she puts the the sign on the right side of the property where the driveway is, it's more likely that the customers are going to stop there. Once they get into the driveway, in my mind, it's, it's safe because they can turn around there and they can pull out without backing onto Two Lights Road. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm just wondering what the, how the neighbors view that, if they have a view on if she, if she puts the sign next to the driveway, would that um, address your concerns about, about the application? Mr. Boxer, yeah. Just. If you could come up to the podium, please. I, I think uh, obviously anything would help, and, and I, I would agree with the chair just intuitively. Uh, if you sell something, people are going to feel free to stop in front of the house as much as they're going to feel free to drive around the corner. So. Um, the more uh, they are forced and pointed to an area, um, the better. But uh, uh, you know, people tend to stop in front of houses, uh, and so I think the sign would have to be pretty carefully thought through to, uh, uh, to remove that sort of instinctive thought that people have. Uh, uh, and they may just pull up in front of the sign, too. But again, it, it, uh, and I'm not answering a question because who knows? Uh, I'm, I'm saying that I think your, your thought is certainly heading in the right direction that whatever you can do to, to eliminate the possibility that people just stop on the side of the road and walk around to the house, uh, the better. And, and, I, and I can't give you any more. Thanks. Thank you for asking. Sure. Sure. Uh, yeah, feel free to come to the podium, Ms. Page. In regards to this traffic issue, Mr. Boxer does not live on Two Lights Road. He lives in Mayor's Hollow, which is a private road, which is a mile, maybe half a mile down. He doesn't have to deal with this, this issue. We, the, the traffic is not going to be created. The traffic is already there. We back out of our driveways every day. Every day I back out of my driveway for eight years. Nobody's rammed me. Nobody's hit me. Nobody's done anything. We all do it. What? Carrie Lynn is trying to accomplish here is putting people in a safe place. People are going to stop on this road regardless. I'm out in my yard, I kid you not, 10 times a day. I will be st standing out there working in my garden. People will ask me a question. Boy, they're going to have two wheels on and two wheels off. They don't care how they sit it. It's there. What she's trying to do is make a sign, park here, they're going to get out. People don't come here to shop. This is, not, this is a place where, oh, we're in Maine. Let's look how cute. Let's stop here. This is some place you see when you drive by. This is not a destination. You see it, you say, oh, how cute, let's look. That's what you do. You have a sign by the driveway, you turn into the driveway, you turn on to Beacon Lane. They're fine, they're right there. What this issue is with you is two lights. It's there, it's always gonna be there, it always will be there. If you go on the road, the site, if you do a site walk, it's not gonna change. It's always going to be there. So trying to put them into the driveway, which is a great idea, putting them on Beacon Lane, great idea. It's simple. This is a simple situation. 
in this regard. You guys are kind of turning this where it's like, it's, again, they stop, they're going to ask us directions regardless. You know, they're not looking for this. This is something they stumble upon. That's all it is. Yeah, but that's my concern is that there, if you have people stopping for directions and people driving to the lobster shack, mm -hmm. and you add to that dangerous situation, people stopping. I go out to get my mail and it's a dangerous situation. It's, it's, I go to get the mail and it's a dangerous situation. Right. And, it's, and it's, 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 what we're trying to avoid is making it more dangerous by having uh, customers stop and park half in, in but again, one of the as, as you like, see by the, by, the, by the design that she has, they're pulling into a driveway. They're pulling into Beacon Lane. They're pulling off the main road. They're not going on the road because there's nothing there to tell them it's on the road. Turn here. Turn here. So, so if I can paraphrase what you're saying, there are two ongoing conditions. One is there's a normal pattern of traffic where people stop on that road if they see somebody out to ask directions. Uh, that's one. And the second one was, previously there used to be items displayed and people might stop because they saw the item. Exactly. So the actions that are being, that you're suggesting is that they not be in sight, so there'd be nothing to stop for there, and that signage would be put up saying, parking here, saying what's being sold. So the efforts are actually to make, there's going to be a constant amount of people who are going to stop when they see somebody outside in that neighborhood anyways, and that these actions are actually making uh, making the normal it's safe. day to day safer. Exactly. Exactly. But again, this is something you stumble upon. This is not something that's advertised. This is not something that people say, oh, let's go shopping here today. It's not that. You're driving down the road. You see it. Oh, let's stop. Oh, let, oh this is a cute little dead end road. Let's drive down it. We've all done it. You all go on vacation. You all do it. It's, it's you know, you just do it. We can't, we have no control over it. But we're trying to accommodate it, trying to, to make it, you know, easy, backing out, this and that. You're going to have to back out no matter where you go, no matter what you do. Is that it? Thank you. Thanks. Any other comments for or against or any comments at all? Good evening. My name is Peter Welch. I'm Carrie Ellen's husband. And uh, maybe if I could uh, try to address your concerns uh, to the chair regarding the driveway uh, or the ingress, egress issues. I think if the signage, the, the history of the stones being outside for the last couple seasons during the summer when she put them out on the weekends or whatever, that was passerbys would be awestruck or otherwise attracted to the stones and would pull over. I got to see these stones now. <laughs> they are actually, they're very nice, uh, they're very nice creations. They are hobby creations. Uh, you know, there's, there's supplemental and in income. Uh, what, excuse me, was there signage out there in the previous summers? She, she had, the, the, next to the, the tables where she put them on, she had a, you know, a sign indicating the price, stepping stones, um, which is, they were the same size or smaller than the sign she's proposing. For here. Did the signs indicate where to park or anything? Uh, no, no, they were just right there next to the stones. So people would pull up adjacent to the stones. It should be noted that the signs, uh, the, the display was up towards the further end of the lot. So they were already by the driveway. I hadn't even got to the driveway at that point, coming and going. So they naturally. And I'm not trying to defend this, but that's well, that's, that's happens, yeah. They naturally pulled over. That goes to my whole point of it'll depend a lot where the sign is on the property right. as to where the cars end up. And I, and I think, you know, from the location point of the signage, uh, along with Mr. Walsh, I've, I've been in retail for many years myself, too, and the signage, the location of the signage to, to guide people into the driveway, uh, appropriately guide them into the driveway, would be best put uh, going towards the lobster shack on this side of the driveway. One, as passer buyers are going towards the shack, they'll see that there's the Stepping Stone uh, studio is there. And then on their way back, they'll see it as well with a sign indicating, perhaps underneath, in addition to what Carolyn had, had, had outlined there, saying, you know, please park in driveway, uh, and, and, you know, arrow, and, and sort of doing all that can be. I mean, human nature is sort of what it is. You know, water does flow 
downhill, no matter how hard we try to dam it up sometimes. Uh, so with, you know, I think we can make all the best efforts, and it would be dutiful in trying to make all the best efforts to, one, locate the sign properly, have the sign properly anointed so people are directed properly, and, and make the, those concerted efforts. But, but to say that some, you know, occasionally someone's going to not park there, probably so. And those are some of the same people that we see you know, with frequency down the road. But I think, you know, I know that she's dedicated to make all the efforts to, to properly locate that. And if the site visit would, would help clear that up for, you know, for, for your views too. Uh, I mean, it, her idea is to do it right and, and to make it work. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments? Okay. Um, since there's no further comments on the application for or against, I'll close the uh, public discussion and um, go to the uh, discussion by the board. Um, go ahead, I, Mr. Walsh. Question for the chair. You had talked um, about some of the options available to the applicant to um, withdraw the application and resubmit the application and answer some of the questions that you have on the table. Um, can we approve her application with the condition that we do the site visit and actually determine at that time the answers to the questions that we've all had? Yeah. Well, my, my view, would, that would be a little bit putting the cart before the horse. The problem is that her time to do business is now. And if we were to push her off for another month, just saying that if we can fit her into the next agenda, a month, the month of May is over, June is coming, and that's when the retail trade in Maine is at its, on its peak, I guess. So I, I, I just, for, the, just for the, the process question more than anything. Yeah, your decisions have to be based on findings, yeah. actual findings, so I don't see how you could. You can't do that. Okay. All right. Peter, did you have? Well, I mean, my, my thinking on this is that um, if the signs placed near the driveway, like Mr. Welch was saying, that chances are people are going to pull into the driveway, and it would be rare that somebody would pull over on Two Lights Road. Um, so I'd be inclined to approve the application with that condition that the, the sign, number one, encourages people to park in the driveway, number two is placed in a, a location that would suggest pulling into the driveway. Um, my own, my, I, I've already expressed my view, so I'll just reiterate it, which is, um, to me, uh, this, is potentially a much more hazardous situation than some other um, the earlier application, for instance, because it is a thoroughfare. Cars do zip along there pretty well. Um, it also is a much more substantial impact proposed use in the sense that it is retail. It entails signs. It entails, I think, a burden on the neighbors of basically subjecting their houses and their everyday use to basically a commercial, clearly commercial enterprise. Um, so I think the burden should be on the applicant much more substantially to satisfy us that aesthetically it's going to be appropriate, that it's going to be safe, that people to the greatest degree possible are not going to create traffic conditions. And it's the inherent attractiveness of retail locations that scares me in the sense that people will see the sign, they'll be coming along at 35 miles an hour, They'll see a sign, they won't make the turn for the driveway, and they'll end up pulling up 30 feet down the road, and we have to glance it in the rearview mirror. So for all those reasons, I really think the burden should be on the applicant to um, come back with sign designs, uh, what it's going to say, where it's going to be located, and other people, neighbors, having an opportunity to see what those signs are going to look at, to see even if it satisfies the safety issue, it's going to satisfy their aesthetic issues. I mean, I think that's a legitimate concern. And so I am not 
you know, I think this is a substantial impact type use, and I'm not convinced, and if I have to vote today, I'll, I'll vote against it. Maybe you should make that a motion. What's that? Maybe you should make that a motion so that we can move along in. Yeah, well, I guess I would move that we, um, I guess I would move in fairness to the applicant. At the same time, let me balance my comments by saying I don't necessarily want to uh, make life difficult for the applicant. And, and my comments earlier about wanting to give folks the opportunity to make a reasonable income um, are, are still stand. And uh, so I don't necessarily want to disprove the application. And what I would uh, suggest is that we float a motion to um, to table this issue for a month uh, to do a site visit and to allow the applicant to come back with uh, signed designs that the neighbors can see so they can get their own view as to whether or not they are going to be troubled by that. I mean, is it going to be 10 feet wide, uh, 10 feet high with neon lights on it? The sign can't be more than two square what's that? feet. The sign can't be more than two square feet. Two square feet. One feet. by two. Fine. I mean, what's it going to look like? Where is it going to be located? I still have a philosophical difference, and I don't know if the code. Um, we have a resident that's lived in the facility for 23 years that's been doing business, and the reason for the signage was for safety. And now the issue is turning that the signage, because it won't affront um, the neighbors. And I think that's an issue, but I don't think, I think we're mixing issues here. I think if the premise is supposed to be for safety uh, and for a site plan, but I, I think the homeowner is entitled to run uh, a, a business under conditional use and exactly that. You can't have a, uh, you know, a neon sign and, and flashing uh, to upset the, 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 the uh, basic balance of the neighborhood, but I don't think the premise should be on uh, the neighborhood since, again, effectively, uh, this business has been running for the past three seasons. And if anything, measures have been undertaken to make it less visible, with the exception of a sign. So I guess I think we're mixing we're mixing concepts, and not that, that both don't apply here. But I, I think um, there are several issues, and I, and I think if you if you uh, feel that strongly, strongly, I think we might, the best thing might be to uh, table it. I would move that we table the application for to the next meeting to give the applicant an opportunity to clarify what these signs are going to be, where they're going to be located, and also for uh, us either as a group or individually to do a site visit to the location to get a better feel for what the traffic issues are. Is this site visit um, as a board or individually? Uh, I'm open to discussion on that. Whatever you you feel is most appropriate. I, we, I, since I've been on the board, we haven't done one, so I'm open to suggestions on that. Uh, I think that would be the board's call. I mean, we can schedule. If you want to go as a board, we'd have to schedule schedule that, uh, and we can schedule it before the regular meeting. Yeah. Um, Doesn't that constitute a public meeting as well? Then? It does. It does. Has to be after. Yeah. So, so, so we'd, you'd have to open the meeting at the site. And anything to discuss, somebody would have to take notes. And then you'd move it back to here for discussion. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. If, unless somebody has objections to it, it might be appropriate to give everybody, to give the applicant an opportunity to meet with us, talk it through, make sure that uh, we're dealing with it appropriately. Get a feel for where the sign is, and what it's going to look like. Get a feel for what it's going to look like in that community. So I'll bend my motion to. Uh, I would move that we table the application for this month uh, and conduct a site visit as a group, as a board, uh, with the applicant before the next meeting. Give the app applicant the opportunity to amend the application, specify what the signs are going to look like, where they're going to be posted. Anyone want to second that? Or amend it. Second. 
So I take it it's going down in flames. <laughs> no one wants to second that motion. Motion fails for lack of a second. Okay, motion's off the table. Further discussion? Sure. If, if there's no further if there's no further discussion, anybody else have further comments on the application before we move to the elements? Um, Any other t arm twisting? I guess. What options do we have in front of us now? I mean, you you, you are somewhat uncomfortable with the application as it stands now. Well, we've got to go through the elements. I think it's time to go through the elements. We've discussed this. And you can put conditions on it as you go, but it really is time to get down to business here, gentlemen. Well, the, <laughs> the, uh, the option we had available to us was to table it and do a site visit. Absent that move, I think we are faced, the applicant has not withdrawn the application, so the application's before us. I think we have to take a vote on each of the elements to see if we can make the findings necessary to approve the application. And an absent uh, affirmative vote of a majority of the board present on each of the elements, the application fails. Majority vote? It's, she, the applicant needs to get three votes on each of the elements, which are the same elements that we went through before on the prior application. So any further discussion or anybody want to make a motion, any other motions before we go to the finding? Uh, I, would, I would float the motion that we table this uh, with individual site visit for one month. And, uh, okay. Um, I'll second that motion. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the motion. The, the, the motion, uh, uh, Peter, would be to uh, table this for one month with the uh, instead of having a public site visit, to have individual uh, site visits. The, the difference being uh, that people can go at their own time and inspect uh, the area. If we have a public uh, site visit, it becomes a formal meeting and you need to keep records and whatnot. It just looked to me a little bit more cumbersome. And I, I've seconded that motion. So the motion on the table is, is, is as stated. Um, obviously, during the month, if the applicant wants to amend the application to provide further information and clarification of some of the issues that's been raised, you're welcome to do that. Uh, we can't force you to do it. Um, so with that motion pending, all in favor of tabling this um, application till next month to give the board members opportunity to do individual site visits. Uh, all in favor? Motion passes. So the application is tabled for this month and during the next month, um, before the next meeting, each member will conduct an individual site visit of the property. So that matter is closed for today. I believe that was everything. Oh, we still have one more application. Next matter before us is to hear the request of James Phillips and Melissa Burke, Seven Point Road, Tax Map U08, Lot 37, to reconstruct and enlarge an existing structure within 75 feet of the normal high water line of the ocean. The applicant, please come to the podium. Hi, my name is uh, James Phillips, um, and I present with my wife, Melissa Burke, 
to uh, increase the size of an existing home uh, by 30% of volume and 30% of square footage. Uh, it is the home at Seven Point Road, as you mentioned. Um, the existing square footage as it stands is uh, 3,014 3, feet, square feet, I'm sorry. And we are allowed with that 30% expansion, 904 feet, uh, for a total of 3,918 uh, 3, square feet. Uh, we propose a, an increase, if I get this correct, uh, square footage of 4.2%, or 126 square feet. The existing volume currently is uh, 19,390 uh, cubic feet. Uh, and we're allowed uh, an addition of uh, 5,817 uh, cubic feet. Um, you may have some information there, including a light monitor with, but after speaking with uh, Mr. Smith and taking his wise guidance, uh, that will be uh, retracted. So the current expansion without the light monitor as it stands is 29.5% of the square footage. And so the drawings that we have, if I understand it, basically yeah. the light. Basic, yeah, just if you can, just off. delete that. Yeah. Delete that. I think the only reason that was explained was because he was going to go for variance to it, decided against that. So now you have a a reconstruction of an existing building by 50% or more of its value as it sits on the, on the lot. Uh, and in that respect, uh, the board has to look to see if it can meet the setback to a greater practical extent than what it is on the face of the earth now. And basically that's, other than the fact that you should understand what's been built and, and, uh, and that they're not going to exceed the 30 percent or 50 percent of birthday service coverage, uh, that's the scope of your, of, your, of your review should be based on whether it can meet the set back to the greatest practical extent in exchange for allowing um, uh, the, the, the building to be reconstructed at its present location or less non-conforming. Right. And as I understand it, it's going to be less, it's either equal to or less non-conforming as far as? It, 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 it's not going to be closer to, to the ocean um, and it can't be, you can't relocate it. Oh, well, I shouldn't say you can't. You should decide whether it can be relocated on that lot to make it further away from the 75 foot setback. And as I understand it, basically it's a peninsula that sticks out in the water, right? Correct. So if you moved it. Closer one way, you're going to be clo closer to water on one side. If you move it to the other, you're going to be closer on the other side. Yes, that was a real problem when it's. <clears throat> yeah. And it otherwise complies with the change that he's proposed. It meets the volume and square footage requirements. Right. So, other than that, I shouldn't say, use the word, um, just a formality, but in some cases, you, you can actually relocate sure. and, and, and be out of the 75 feet entirely. Right. And sometimes you can go from 40 to 50. Right. In reality, that's the, what the board would say, okay, we'll approve this, but you're going to have to do that. Right. Um, in this particular case, although they have to come before the board, there may not be any other alternative, and, and uh, so it's more formality than anything. Have we had any opposition expressed, please? No, I had no, no calls, uh, no letters, no emails, no visits. Anything else that you would like to add, add to the application, sir? No. And I take a note of any, uh, any conversation with any neighbors. If you 
share the plan with anybody? Sure. Um, <clears throat> well, the plans were more or less created um, roughly around the winter time. Uh, there are maybe one or two neighbors uh, they are familiar with it, but we don't really have any really close neighbors. Uh, the only one is currently vacation in Florida for the most part. And uh, <clears throat> they've only been completely supportive. Just out of curiosity, and this it shows, it says in sale electric parcel. What is that? Mean? It's a good question. I'm not sure I know what it knows, what it means. <clears throat> it's currently where our, our, um, our septic field is or our leach field. Uh, but I don't it know. It's part of your parcel. You it is part of the parcel. My understanding is years ago the owners of our property um, purchased that other parcel so that others couldn't build on it. But that's, you know. So really, your nearest neighbor is quite a ways away because of that parcel. Yes, right across, right across from that uh, property, that second piece of property. Yeah. <coughs> Oops, sorry. Any other, anyone else want to comment? Speak I'm, to us. I'm just here. Just support. Moral support. My, my name is Marilyn Levy, and I'm the architect who prepared okay. the documents. So if you have any questions on the documents, I'd be happy to answer those for you. How's it going to look without that light in the White House? Um, well, it would, we, we designed it to, it actually, the, the light monitor came as a discussion around sustainable design and not using air conditioning, and of course they're in a perfect site to be able to take advantage of that. <clears throat> um, but it did, it pushed them over, not significantly, but in, in, in some communities, a one or two percent is negotiable, but uh, we understand from Mr. Smith that's not that's not so on the oceanfront in Cape Elizabeth. So um, the, the roof height is not increased at all from what you see today. It's dormers set inside the existing roof form. How many square feet is it going to be when completed? Uh, it's only increasing 4.2% in square footage. Um, it's going from 3,000. 14 to 3,140. And that's mostly in the area that's over where the kitchen, uh, the second floor area that's over the kitchen and the, uh, an existing screened in porch. Um, we're actually taking off um, an existing, very small existing um, uh, airlock where the main entrance was, that's going away. And, and they're putting a new covered entry over, but it's not enclosed. It's just a small covered entry that covers the steps, basically. Mm -hmm. And then um, their mudroom or airlock is, is within the existing footprint of the house. And I have larger photographs of the house if you want to see those. It, it will significantly, uh, it'll make the second floor much more usable, frankly, mm -hmm. than, because it is floored up there, but it's pretty low. Headroom, if I remember correctly. It's, I'm sorry? It, the headroom goes down. Oh, the head, yeah, it's quite, um, it, right currently the stairway to the second floor is right in the middle of the house. It's a classic old cape, but, but with a very shallow roof. It does have a nine foot eight clearance inside in the middle, but the, the uh, rafters go right down to the, the um, ceiling mm -hmm. joists for the first floor. So the only way they can really use that space on the second floor is to put the dormers in place. That's why the minimal square footage addition. Yeah. 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 And then they're also um, uh, where that main entrance was, which is actually on the ocean side, as opposed to the Pond Cove side. Um, there's a brick walkway that goes all along there that will be removed. Sounds like it's going to turn out very beautiful. We hope so. It's a very visible site, and the intention was to um, take special care. Very good. Any further comments, questions? You might want to look through the conclusions or the, the questions she answered, because like there's one, the impact on viewers. You might want to discuss that a little bit, find out whether, I assume no neighbors have said anything about that, but you might want to vote on the record that, that, that what they're doing 
by going up. Yeah, I guess I'll ask the applicant or the architect, to what extent, if any, does this affect anyone else's views? We, we don't believe there's a major impact because for 80% of the house, the roof line isn't going higher than it already is. Yeah. There's a small portion over, it's a 14 by 14 area over the existing kitchen, which is on top of the, the little garage that's at the north end of the house. That has a, a, a larger roof so that a master bathroom could be put up in that part of the, the addition. And but what it about still falls within the 30% the allowable expansion. I assume the only par parcel that really looks out over this house is lot 38, maybe 39. Could, could I approach your max? Down to the yeah. 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 From 38, though, looking down at their house, you will have the, the dormers coming off that roof line. Correct. So that would be some, some. potential. Some. Yeah, that's, that would be, seem like the only one. Right. But that I mean, house also faces 138 at a very different angle. It does. So it's, you know, it's kind of a, interesting. But there, there will be some yeah. change in the view. Yeah. You got yeah. The sample draft. You should go down to the. the I don't know if I is that in the packet. Yeah. And say and, and and either say how they apply or don't apply, and or if they're not applicable to this particular. Application. Could you pass that down, Bruce? I don't think I. Got, I don't know if I got one. The rest of you got that. Oh, it's probably in here somewhere. Um, I got to find my mark up. To what extent is it, are you removing any vegetation? There, there is some uh, foundation shrubbery in the area where the construction would take place. Um, some of it's deciduous and some of it is um, coniferous. And it would be um, more than likely um, relocated for construction and then put back in place. Because there's only a small area where we have to put a foundation in under the, the current screened-in porch, which will become part of the enclosed space on the first floor, um, is just on a post foundation right now. Yeah. The rest of it's on a full concrete foundation, dry basement. And the subsurface sewage disposal system, is that being upgraded or anything? It was upgraded in 2004. So that's all up to snuff? For four bedrooms. Taken care of. I believe, okay. yeah. Good. I have no further questions for you unless you have anything else you want to add. Very good. Any discussion from the board? My only question is if, if the information's in the application, isn't that part of the record so we can just rely on what's on the application to vote? Yes. She, okay, because she, she included a statement that address, addresses the vegeta vegetation and the views and all that. <clears throat> so we, we can just vote on it based on that yep. document. Okay, um, I think we need to make a few findings of fact to enable us to have the motion put forward to approve the application. The first one is that the uh, proposed modification will um, not increase the non-conforming nature of the dwelling within 75 feet of the normal high water line of the ocean. All in favor of that finding? Unanimous. And. Um, the applicant has demonstrated that the present subsurface waste sewage disposal system uh, is satisfactory to the requirements of state law. Uh, all in favor of that finding? Uh, that un unanimously passes. Um, and um, so I will make a motion to approve the application of James Phillips and Melissa Burke, tax map U. 08, lot 37, uh, for uh, approval of the relocation, reconstruction of the um, present 
property located there in accordance with the application that has been filed with the board. Could I have a second to their motion? Second. All in favor of the motion? Motion passes, application's approved. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you, Bruce. Okay, um, any further business today, Bruce? No. Any communications? Nope. We have a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Seconded. All in favor? Meeting adjourned.